All right, the subject is Down syndrome, but before we talk about Down syndrome specifically, let's talk about a more general situation that results in Down syndrome and other genetic uh, challenges, other chromosomal abnormalities. The term is right here. It's called non-disjunction in meiosis. It could be meiosis 1. It could be meiosis 2. I'll not ask you a thing about that. But what does non-disjunction mean? It means failure to separate. In this case, we're talking about the failure of chromosomes or chromatids to separate properly during meiosis. What's the uh, normal situation? Meiosis 1, homologous pairs are separated. Meiosis 2, sister chromatids are separated. All of these are supposed to end up in separate gametes. If there's non-disjunction, what happens? Things get stuck together. Instead of going their separate ways, they may stay together for somewhat longer. And the result is too few over this way, too many over this way. So normal meiosis produces how many uh, chromosomes per gamete? We've said this many times before, half of each pair. That's 23, right? Uh, what's abnormal? Uh, what is non-disjunction? Uh, do in terms of chromosome number and what's abnormal. Uh, abnormal is anything different from what? Anything different from 23. It could be one too many, it could be one too few. And so uh, when this happens it could re it result in it results in certain uh, chromosomal abnormalities, one of which results in Down syndrome. And so uh, uh, here's a couple uh, pictures from your book about Down syndrome. Let's take a look at this one first the karyotype of a person with Down syndrome. These type of analyses that we've seen before are called karyotypes. You've heard cary before, right? Prokaryotic, eukaryotic, something to do with the nucleus, right? All right, so these chromosomes were in the nucleus, but they're now uh, all spread out and analyzed and, and sorted and all that stuff. And so where's the abnormality here? Well, it's in uh, uh, chromosome number 21. We've seen this before. Instead of being two there, there's an extra chromosome 21. And this produces the symptoms associated with Down syndrome, extra chromosome 21. Uh, where did it come from? Well, it came in the egg cell or the sperm cell, obviously, and most of the time in the egg cell. About 90% of the time in the egg cell, about 10% of the, of the time, obviously, in the sperm cell. And so the result is the symptoms of Down syndrome. And so uh, there's also that chart which shows a correlation. Uh, as the mother's age increases, what, uh, what can we say about the chances of giving to birth to a child with Down syndrome? The chances go up, 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 up. Much higher chance for a 45-year-old mother having a child with Down syndrome than a 20-year-old mother. And so we'll kind of summarize those st statistics in our little follow-up. Um, text and uh, probably a pen cast or something. And so that's it for this one.